Hi, welcome to the Smart Home Sunday. My name's Paul. I'm tinkering once again with Home Assistant. Let me take a couple of minutes to show you the latest in my powerful automation. Controlling a couple of dumb heaters in our lounge room. I'm using a Philips Hue motion sensor, actually. It's got a little temperature sensor in it. And every time that sensor changes its reading, so it just updates a new temperature value, I have a powerful automation that runs, that checks what time of day it is, and looks for a temperature range. And then we'll decide whether those heaters should be turned on or off. Now, here's what my dashboard looks like, and this is a bit messy. I've got an away temp and home temp, but I've got a max and a min, and this is where I'm saying I want the temperature to float between a couple of degrees. So 16 and 17 if we're at home, and 11 and 12 if we are away, or effectively away also means when we are asleep. But I realized when I did the automation that this is a bit clunky because I really shouldn't need that dashboard to have four values. I should be able to do it with two and just set a desired home temp and a desired away temp. Now, let me show you heating lounge automation number one. This was version one. And here I am looking at a particular condition. I'm looking at that uh, temperature sensor and I'm just checking it against this input number. And so numeric state, temperature sensor, if the temperature sensor reading is above the input number home temp max, then turn off the heater at the staircase and turn off the heater over by the window. But that's why if I use this numeric state below or above, I need to have two sets of input numbers for home and two for away. That's a little bit inefficient. So let me show you how I figured out I can do all of this with just one home temperature value and one away. I could actually do it with just one home temperature, but then I would need to set a fixed offset of when we are away. And it might be good to be able to tinker and change those separately. But let's dig into the dashboard first and show you what that looks like. And then I will show you the updated version two of this automation. So here you can see now I just have away temp and home temp. So these can be adjusted, slide it around. Okay, there it is. So the away temp on 12 and the home temp on 17. This would make a dashboard look a lot cleaner and neater. And I can get rid of this four. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at the heater automation version two. Version two. It looks like this. Into the YAML. Always go into the YAML. Now, quick update of what happens. Every time temperature sensor measures a reading, this automation is triggered. I'm going to change that. More at the end. Don't go away. So the automation runs and some conditions are checked. Yes, the trigger was fired. Yes, it's between six and nine, and here it is. I use a condition template and a value template, and I check for the states, there's only one of them, but the states of the sensor, the backdoor sensor temperature, this float is just a filter, so it means that I get a number back. So uh, decimal point number 15.7, for example. Then I'm checking, is this sensor value, this number greater than the state of the input number of home temp. If it is, if the sensor reads 17.1, then that is greater than 17. Therefore, turn off the heater at the staircase and turn off the heater at the window. Now, if you can understand that logic, then you would understand how easy it is for me now to set an offset for the other half of the statement that I need to create. And that's exactly what I've done. So you can see here also looking at the same time between six and nine, I'm using a condition template, but this time my backdoor sensor temperature is less than the input number home temp minus one. So the input home temp is 17 minus one is 16. And so if the temperature sensor, whatever that reading is, 15.9, it's less than 17 minus 1, 15.9 less than 16. Therefore, turn on the heater at the staircase and turn on the heater over by the window. Yes.
Let me show you the summary of this, so what it looks like, the old and the new. So here you can see this is what the original one looked like using a condition numeric states and then you can refer to your input number but you can only use this above or below so you can't do that. That's not going to work. You can't say what if I just make this below input number dot home temp max minus one. That's not allowed. You're mixing up your variables and it doesn't work properly. So instead, I can create a condition template, value template, look for the states of this particular entity and compare it if it's greater than the states of the input number home temp. There it is. And then for the other one, input number home temp minus one. And again, very important, the greater than and the less than symbol that is doing the check. So when the condition is true, the rest of the automation rolls on. And if it's false, well, it just doesn't run and it goes to check some other sets of conditions. There it is. So if you have found this useful, well, I tell you what, while I was building this one, I thought, hang on a minute, I should have been checking time of day, I should be checking if we are at home. And it just so happens that Home Assistant has a nice little integration with Microtik. And I have a Microtik router and Microtik access point in this house. And so therefore, I can trigger this whole automation based on our mobile phones. And the beauty of that is, it'll always be setting the home temp when we are home and the away temp when we're not here. And also when we go to sleep, guess what? The phones go on to offline mode, flight mode activated. We'll tell the router, which will tell home assistant, we are away. Therefore, the heaters will go into away mode. If, if you want to see that in action, I'll show it to you next week. So hit subscribe. See you next week, next Sunday for another Smart Home Sunday tinkering time. And tomorrow I'll do some renovation. Bye.